The other thing that the committee has needed in its time, apart from the vision and the funds supplied by the Minister, has been to be guided by a fantastic chair in Professor Mary O'Kane. She's going to take us behind the scenes on this year's committee. It's the del deliberations. Uh, I don't know if she's going to reveal who voted for who and whether things were all hunky-dory or whether people were crying in the fetal position and, you know, shouting at each other, but she's going to... She chaired the committee, and I was lucky enough to be on the committee for a couple of years myself before uh, moving House a fair way away from Sydney made it a lot harder. Professor O'Kane, thank you so much for the work you've done in years gone by and again this year. Give her a big round of applause as she talks us through this year on the committee. All yours, Mary. Thank you, Adam. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? He's coming back next year. The Minister persuaded him. So, Minister, thank you for many things. Um, I have to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that when the Minister came into office and she had this brilliant idea of the Medical Devices Fund, and she asked me to chair it, she gave me one KPI. And that was, we need the next cochlear, the next ResMed. Ooh, so I turned to the wonderful committee, and it is a fantastic expert panel, and I said, uh, guess what? This is simple, what we have to do. And we had to translate that into what might that mean? And as you know, those of you who are applicants, that a lot of it is about doing that by moving along the technology readiness level scale. We want to see significant that our money will make a difference and allow you to jump significantly up there so that you are much closer to being a big high impact company and it'll impact health in New South Wales and around the world and we want some way of measuring it, so we use the technology readiness level idea. I mention this because the other day, Catherine Livingston, the chair of the Business Council of Australia and the CEO and others, a group went to the UK to look at innovation. And as you know, the Prime Minister's about to put out an innovation statement. Anyway, the Business Council of Australia group came back and I was having coffee with them, with some of them, and they said, oh, you know, in the UK, everyone talks about the technology readiness level. And even journalists can talk about it. And they think it's so useful. And I said, boring. Um, <laughs> we have a brilliant minister here who gave me this KPI. And the only way to do it was technology readiness level. We talk about it too. All of you do. So, you know. Um, but it ha even using such good devices as technology readiness level, a well-known international scale that's been in use for years in the US, the UK, particularly the US through the Department of Defence, it's still a really hard task to choose. And it's getting harder because, because of the wonderful evolution of the scheme with the new um, commercialisation training arrangements, with the with us, I think, articulating better the need to link strongly to a real clinical problem and have deep clinical links. The, the level, which already was very high, is lifting. And we had um, 86 applications, Anne, I have to remember, back through a tough year, and we have to get down to the ones that are really going to work. And because the Minister has arranged very considerable flexibility in the funding, it's not so much about coming in within a funding bracket as being able to find the best. So we work through it, we shortlist, we, and I want to thank the shortlisting panel guided and looked after by Anne O'Neill, a fantastic task and a really tough and they grade everything with great notes. And Anne, of course, works with the fantastic Tony Penner, my great colleague, the head of the uh, Office of Health and Medical Research, and Tony and the team make our dream, as the, our work as the expert panel, a total dream. But they keep us honest and keep us right up to the level, bringing the best work to us. So the shortlisting happens. It goes through then to a process of we look at it, we really poke and prod that shortlist, and from the shortlist come down to an interview list, and again we look at them financially, we look at them technically, we get in experts, financial experts, clinical experts who write for us and talk to us. And can I thank all of you who do that assessment work. It's tough and I know our, we have high requirements of you and nasty time deadlines and you meet them so graciously. Thank you for that. Above all, thank you to my colleagues on the expert panel, to Neville Mitchell, to Bob Freighter, to Michael Still and to Greg Keogh. It's the dream team. We've been working together for some years now and it's very tough and 
as you know so well, Adam, everyone is so professional, there's no crying and screaming, but everyone works very hard and is very polite. And we've got the Super Secretariat for Tony Pedro, Anne O'Neill and all the team. And above all, can I thank all of you who apply. It's tough work applying to this scheme. It's not, not easy. We put you through hoops. And we have started to worry because out of the few years we've been funding, the government's been funding on our recommendation more precisely, um, the companies have done so well. We're terrified now of making a mistake. You shouldn't be risk-taking something Australians should do. But um, they're, they're going very, very well. So the bar is high and we know this year's crop is incredibly good. Congratulations, winners, and thank you for being part of the process. Thank you all.